Hi, my name is Hugo and I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. Has your boss ever asked you to build an SPFX web part? Maybe something like this? What's happening? I'm going to need you to go ahead and build me an SPFX solution. Well, today I'm going to show you how to scaffold an SPFX web part using the Yeoman generator. Let's get started. Now this video assumes that you have already configured your workstation to be able to create SPFX solutions. If you haven't done so yet, please visit aka.ms slash SPFX dash setup or watch our other video showing how to configure your workstation. When you're ready, create a blank folder where your solution will go. I named mine Hello SPFX, but you can choose a name that is more suitable to you. Now you don't have to name your folder the same as your solution, but it'll save you some time later. Using the command prompt of your choice, make sure that your current directory is the folder that you created for the solution. Personally, I like to use the Visual Studio Code terminal to do this because the steps are always the same regardless of what operating system you use or whether you're developing a local workstation or a remote container. Now that we're ready to scaffold your solution to do so, we'll just type yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint and hit enter. The first thing you'll see is a nice little welcome message that tells you the version of the SPFX generator you're using. As you can see, I'm using version SPFX 114. That's the version that was available at the time of this video. The next thing you'll see is a link to more information about this Yeoman generator. If you need more information that's not included in this video, please visit the URL, or if you're using Visual Studio Code Terminal, you can control click on the URL to go to that URL directly. The first question I'll ask you is to name your solution. By default, it'll suggest the same name as the current folder, and you can hit enter to accept the default. Keep in mind when you're creating your solution that you may have more than one component for that solution. So let's say I'm building a series of web parts for the Contoso accounting department, Maybe I'll use the same solution to add all the related web parts and name it something like Contoso Accounting. Now all you need to do here is type your solution name or don't type anything and accept the default and hit enter to go to the next question. In my case, I'll accept the default and hit enter. The next question is going to be what type of client-side component you want to create. You can pick between web part, extension, library, so maybe you want to reuse some code across multiple solutions or an adaptive card extension. Just use your cursor, the uh, up and down arrow, to select what you want and hit enter. In this case, we're going to use WebPart. The next question is your WebPart name. By default, it'll suggest Hello World, but you should absolutely type the name of your WebPart here. I like to type the human legible name here. For example, I'll enter Hello space SPFX because I know that it will use that name that I entered here as the title of my web part, and it will remove the spaces to create the name uh, to my web part class. So that way, when I build the web part and I drop it in the web part catalog, it'll already have the right name for me. Keep in mind that the generator will also automatically create the web part class with the name that you provided, and it will add the word web part at the end. So don't name your web part Hello SPFX web part because the generator will then create a class called Hello SPFX web part web part. So you enter the name and then hit enter. Next, it'll ask you what template you want to use. There's three templates here, minimal, no framework, or react. And we'll use the no framework template, but if you wanted to see what the other templates do, you can absolutely watch our other videos where we cover these templates. The Node Framework template will add the code that you need to detect the color and the fonts used in the current SharePoint site. And if you're using the web part inside of Teams, it'll actually receive the theme details for the current Microsoft Teams clients, such as the default color, like light, dark, or high contrast. The web part will also get notified when the theme changes. And the template also includes the code to determine if the component is currently running in a SharePoint context or in a Microsoft Teams context. So I'll pick no framework and I'll hit enter. When you select a template, it starts scaffolding your solution by 
copying template files into your project folder and renaming the files or classes according to the answers you provided earlier. Now, regardless of the template you chose, the Yeoman Generator will install the dependencies you need to build and run your solution. And because SPFX solutions are Node.js projects, it will call npm install to do so. If you see warnings about deprecated modules, just keep in mind that the SPFX generator uses versions of dependencies that have been tested by the SPFX team and they're known to work. But the node modules that are used as dependencies may have been updated since. And you can absolutely update these dependencies to the latest version and we'll show you how to do that in a future video. But once, you're, once it's done, you'll get a message saying that your web part is ready and that you can run Gulp Serve. Check out our other videos to learn how to configure and debug your web part. And that's it. From here, you can add your own code to suit your own needs or to add more functionality to the web part. Today, we showed you how you can use the SPFX Yeoman Generator and the No Framework template to build a very basic web part. But we have more videos where you can learn how to use the other templates and how to add more functionality to your web part. I can't wait to see what you're going to build with the SPFX Generator. We'll see you soon.